All right, Math 30 2s, we're going to start probability today. Um, first page here is about some terminology and notation. I'll expect you to go through and read all this. So once you've read this page and the top of the next page, you can move on. So you can pause it and read through this stuff. We're going to go straight to example one. So anytime you want to pause and go back and read that, great. So example one, consider the first two examples from the review at the start of the top of the last page. A, a fair die is rolled. What's the probability of rolling a one? So in each case, state the sample space. So if a fair die is rolled, the sample space is, the number is one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are all the possibilities. Part two. The favorable outcomes in the sample space. What's the probability of rolling a one? Well, there is one favorable outcome in the sample space. Part three, if the outcomes are equally likely. Yes, yeah, we're told it's a fair dice, so yes, they're equally likely. And part four, the probability of the event occurring. Well, there is one favorable event out of six, so the probability is one-sixth. All right. Look at part B. Number one. A circular spinner is divided into four equal sectors labeled clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. Part one. What is a sample space? Well, there we have it. They're labeled clubs, hearts, diamonds, clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. There's our sample space. Two, the favorable outcomes in the sample space. The question asks, what's the probability that it lands on hearts? So the favorable outcome in the sample space is hearts. Three, if the outcomes are equally likely. We're told it's a circular spinner divided into four sectors. We're going to make the assumption that the spinner works and it doesn't favor one of the four sectors. So we're going to say yes, they're equally likely. And then what's the probability of the event? There is one favorable, there are four possible. This probability is one-fourth. All right. <clears throat> Again, there's a bunch of stuff about complementary events here. I'd like you to read through that. And then let's answer this bottom question from review A. List the outcomes from the complement for the complement of rolling a one, and determine the probability of the complement of rolling a one. So, the complement of rolling a one is not rolling a one. And the outcomes for the complement of not rolling a one are two, three, four, five, and six. Then it asks you to determine the probability of the complement of rolling a one. So the probability of the complement, which is not rolling a one, would be there are five not ones and six total in the sample space. So the probability of the complement of rolling a one is not rolling a one, and that would be five-sixths. You can also read through compound events now. All right. Two coins are tossed, the number of heads is counted. What's the probability of obtaining two heads? Tyler lists the sample space as follows. Since there are three elements in the sample space and only one of these is favorable, the two heads, Tyler concluded that probability of obtaining two heads is one-third. Can you explain why this is not the case? Well, the situation is these three outcomes are not equally likely.
how come? Well, it says in the above example, the outcomes in Teller sample space are not equally likely. And the formula is not applicable. We can use a tree diagram to show that there are four equally likely, equally likely outcomes in this experiment of tossing two coins. Okay. So Tyler did say there's heads and tails, one head, one tail, but they can be in a different order. Therefore, there's two sets of one head and one tail. So we can now determine the probability of two heads. All right. So the probability of two heads, well, we've got that right here. That's the only one. There's one favorable out of four possible. The probability of two tails, well, again, there's one favorable out of four possible. And the probability of one head and one tail, well, here's a head and tail, here's a tail and head. There is two favorable out of four possible, or a one in two chance there. All right. If we look at example two, consider an experiment of a spinning and equally spaced triangular spinner, numbered one, two, three and tossing two coins. Complete the tree diagram to show all the outcomes for this experiment. So I'd like you to pause it and complete that and then check and see if you got the same thing I do. So this is what your completed tree diagram should look like. So part A is now done. Part B, how many elements are there in the sample space? So you count your outcomes. If you count that last column, the number of outcomes, you'll count up a total of 12 possible outcomes. There's 12 elements in the sample space. So you can use the fundamental accounting principle to determine the answer to part B. Well, we've got three options on our spinner. Coin one has two options, head or tail, and coin two has two options, head or tail. So three times two times two is also 12. Are all the outcomes equally likely? Yes, the spinner has equally spaced triangular sections, and we're going to say the coins are fair, so yes, they are all equally likely. State the probability of obtaining a three and two heads. A three and two heads would be this situation only, three head head. How many of those are there? There's only one of those. So we've got a one favorable, so the probability of a three head head, one favorable out of 12 possible. All right. Part B, or number two, probability of a prime number and exactly one tail. So prime number could be a two and exactly one tail, well, head tail, or a two and tail head. Another prime number would be a three and head tail, or a three and tail head. That's a prime number, two or three, and then exactly one tail. So those ones occur right here. Two head tail, two tail head, three head tail, three tail head. That gives us four favorable out of 12 possible, which is a probability of one third. Example three, <clears throat> a blue and red die are rolled. The outcome three on the blue die and four on the red die can be represented by the ordered pair three, four. Show all the possible outcomes in the array on the right. So I'd like you to fill in this array and check back after you're done. Pause and do that. So this is what your array should look like. Part B. How many points are there in the sample space? So if you total up how many boxes there are and how many numbers you wrote down, there are 36 boxes filled in there, 36 possible points in the sample space. List the event. The same number appears on each die as a subset of the sample space. So each number appears on each die, or the same number appears on each die. So that'd be 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, and 6, 6. 
All right. State the probability of the following events. D, the same number appearing on both dice. So just exactly what we just did right here. Well, there are six favorable out of 36 possible. So that probability would be one out of six. All right. How about a different number appearing on each dice? Well, there were 36 samples in total, and six were favorable. So the probability in this case of a different number appearing on each dice would have to be the opposite, or 30 out of 36, which would give us 5 sixths. How could answer D be determined from the answer in how can answer in D part two be determined from the answer in D part one? Well, what we could know is um, the sum of all probabilities is one. And we know that D2 is the complement of D1. Therefore, we could say that the total of 1 minus 1 sixth should give us the complement of 5 sixths, the answer for D2. All right. This is true if these two are complements. And D1 and D2 are definitely complements. All right. So you can work on this assignment. That'd be awesome.